I am a haunted house, and she is the ghost in the attic. Turning on lights, stomping on the floor, and making herself known in every reflection I see. She's there. She's always there. To remind me of how lonely the world can be. To remind me that we are all fragile. I am there with her, up those stairs, sitting in the dark, planning our future together. A future we will never have. A future I will never deserve. I am an exorcist, purging her with pigment. One thing? One thing's all I get? One thing's all I get, I don't want to play this game. I want to be President of the United States. That's right. That way I can declare a state of anarchy. I want to be a movie star. A big fucking movie star. Live in a big fucking house. I want to be the love child of Sid Vicious and Molly Ringwald. I want to sit up all night in an all night diner and order nothing. I want to be God for the sole purpose of saying, I brought you into this world. Don't think for one minute I won't take you out. I want the original promise. I want justice for all. I want love, hate, ups and downs, and everything in between for nothing in return. I want the world in my palm. No cooler than 60 degrees, no warmer than 75, and never a cloud in the sky. I want the perfect kiss, the perfect imperfection, the perfect life. But more than anything, I want someone who wants what I want. And I want her to walk through that door right over there and order biscuits and gravy. Hi. 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 I bet your kids are adorable. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's okay. I already know what I want. Okay. I'll have the biscuits and gravy, please. Same. Okay, two biscuits and gravy. Anything to drink? And coffee's fine. All right. Yes, thanks. I'm Brian. Bella. Nice to meet you, Bella. She blew into my life like a storm, uprooting everything I knew to be true and filling it with so much more. She became everything I never knew I wanted. In a single glance, in a moment, in a stray conversation. In that slight smile that started with the curling of her toes and ended at the corner of her lips. Just before she burst into laughter, she became it. She became perfection. Morris or the Cure? Uh, the Cure, yeah. Beatles or Stones? The Stones. King of Pop or King of Rock? King of Rock, definitely. Well, Elvis has always fascinated me. How so? Well, here's this normal guy that accidentally got famous. I mean, he wrote a song that was for his dad or his uncle or something like that for their birthday. And the next thing you know, he's a teen idol. I just. Watching his life is like watching a tree grow. And it gets bigger and bigger, and then he ends up swollen and yellow. 
don't know, it's like he was on a satellite somewhere in outer space and watching himself, and that's what it did to him. Are you saying that Elvis was an alien? Hello, darling. <laughs> this is Elvis from the planet Graceland, and I just want to thank you for coming out on a date with me this evening. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I like about you? What's that? You're full of shit. And I think I just got a little on my shoe. Oh, I apologize. Thank you. Sorry about that. You better be. <laughs> to Elvis? To Elvis. Elvis. Yellow and swollen. How could I have known even then, in a moment of such happiness, the longitude and latitude of my fall from Graceland? Hours went by, day turns to night, night to day. Small talk turns to talk of dreams and aspirations. First date eyes become the eyes that you take for granted. I hang on every word she says, and those hours that became days become weeks. And we were married on a Saturday. And those weeks became months. And Cole, our first daughter, was born as sweet as sugar. And those months became a year, and that year became four years. And Sarah, our second daughter, was born. Born sick. And that sickness drove Bella into darkness, and she began to wither and die. And me, I became Elvis, yellow and swollen watching my life unfold from a satellite somewhere in space, counting the rings of my tree, and forever wondering how this perfect life came to be. I'll be right there, honey. Wash it out. Okay, then let's wash it out. All right, here we go. Here, turn over. Lean, lean back. Lean back. Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. Lean, no, you want to lean back. Go the other way. Because if you lean back, then I won't hold keep my your dress. Hold yeah. my hands. Yeah, hold her hands. Hold her hands. Lean back. There we go. Oh, that feels good, right? There we go. Yeah, good girl. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yes. Now we can see it. Standing on the shoulders of children, innocent eyes that gaze upon the world with wondrous excitement, you will probably never know me. You will probably not remember me. But someday, when you're older, your mother will show you a photograph and tell you my story. A story filled with self abandon and regret. Regret that I will not be there for your report cards, for proms, for graduations, to give you both away at your weddings. I always wanted to be the one to teach you to drive, to navigate life with that same beautiful innocence that fills your youthful spirit today, to hope, to strive, to dream. But you're only three feet tall and already bigger than me. Good morning. Time to get up. 
My water broke, Brian. Huh? Brian. I just thought I was having a wet dream. Oh, funny. Come on, get up. We gotta Hello. Go. Hello. Oh, Hello. Really? I can't reach you, but come on, get up. Get well, out of bed. Okay. Feel this thing? It's coming out. It's okay. coming out, please. All right. I'm just trying to keep you from panicking. Right. All right. Yeah, take uh, your time. Well, I'm trying. Look, I can't go to the hospital naked. Why not? That would be but a little awkward. Hurting. Okay. All right. Speaking of which hospital are we going? To? You don't know which hospital we're going to. <laughs> yes, I know which hospital. Which hospital are we going to? I don't, I don't know. Let's go. I got it. Okay. Okay. Calm down. Okay. Calm down. You need to do it. Pull out. Watch the hose. Something with more water than you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Reese's, you stay right there. And. Okay. Let's do this. Thank you. Oh. Right. <laughs> Why is this getting Oh, God. We're going to have to detail the car after this. Okay. Okay. You ready? Oh, baby. I'm ready. Um, Are you ready? You I seem just... a little frazzled. Yes. I'm frazzled, yes. Just breathe. Okay. Maybe, um, Cole should drive. Cole! Are you busy? Brian, are you okay? I just needed to talk to someone. I'll wait up. Thank you. Time. It moves so slowly when you have nothing to do but think. To remember the beginning. To dwell on the end and to be haunted by everything in between. To be haunted by that word, that undefinable word, as undefinable as God, yet a word I thought I knew intimately. Perfection. The perfect wife, the perfect children, the house, the dog, the job, the two-car garage, the diapers, the joint bank account. Piano recitals, tap shoes, the American dream, an idea that became an ideal. It's Friday. Is it recycling or yard waste today? Have you ever stood naked, alone, and out of reach?
The way Sarah cries, I can't help her. And the way Bella cries, she doesn't want me to help her. I just want... I know. Well, I don't. Once upon a time, maybe. But not anymore. You want too much. No, I don't. I just want... Your list is too long, and I'm too tired. But I only want it to be perfect. Well, it's not. You never would have started fucking me. Do you have any idea what it's like to want something that you can't have? What do you want? I want you, and you want her, but you don't want her. You want the idea of her, and what you don't understand, Brian, is that you've idealized your life away. But I want you. I don't know what you want, but you don't want me. I'm just another part of the ideal, and I'm not perfect. But you're perfect to me. don't want kids. I'm a cat person. I need time alone more than that. I need time with people. But I already know all this. And I love you for you. How can you love me when she gives you everything? Everything I want, but nothing I need. This. Right here, right now, this is what I need. I need her to hold me like she used to. To hold me so close like we're the same person. Like this. Like what we have. We have a dance and a photograph. Kim was right. She had become the band-aid for a wound that would not heal. And no matter how much of her I stripped away, she would never fit into the mold Bella had created. She was right about a lot of things. One day you wake up and you realize that everything you ever wanted turned out to be nothing you ever wanted at all. And even the big things become as trivial as watermelon. Morning, sunshine. Hey, beautiful. Hi. Hmm. Are you doing anything for lunch today? No. Did you want to do something? Well, I was thinking about stopping by. I'd like that.
What time did you come in last night? What's that, honey? What time did you come in last night? I don't know. I didn't really look at the clock. I didn't even hear you come in. Really? Well, I gave you a kiss goodnight. You rolled over. I thought I woke you up. Nope. <laughs> you know, one of these days I'm going to get a call from Canada. And you're going to be missing a sock. And you're going to have a new tattoo of a heart and some sailor's name on your ass. And you're going to say, <laughs> I don't know where I was, but I woke up <laughs> in a car that wasn't mine with some large man in a unitard offering me a sip of bourbon. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Here's your other sock, sailor. <laughs> You're so sexy when you have your drafty face on. Hey, beautiful. Want to go get some lunch or something? Yeah, I was thinking we could go down to the waterfront, okay. but first I need to use the restroom. Yeah, just at the end of the hall to the left. Well, aren't you forgetting something? What would that be? Do I have to ask? Hi! Hi! You look good. Oh, thanks! How are I'm good. I just stopped by for lunch. I think we're gonna go to the waterfront. Did you want to come? I can't. Thanks, so I've already got plans. That's too bad. We don't hang out enough. I know. We should see each other more often. Oh, that's pretty. What is it? Thanks. Uh, I think it's called posh, but it tastes like watermelon. Watermelon. I like it. So how have you been? Good. You know, kids and stuff. Yeah, we've got some clients like that. <laughs> well, it was good to see you. <laughs> I've got to get back to work. Yeah, good to see you too. You haven't touched your food. And I'm not as hungry as I thought it was. Show? Hi. Is mommy cooking? Something smells good. Cookies, baby. <laughs> Something smells good. Oh, 
now his work. Well, my new client's a total prick, though, and that was good. It's nice to see you today for lunch. You should do that more often. Yeah. I'll let you go. She knew. Nothing more need be said. She knew. And the thought came to her as quickly as a bullet. A bullet expelled from a gun that I had cleaned, oiled, aimed, and fired. Dearest Bella, I miss you. Hey, John. Uh, this is Brian. Um, I'm having a family emergency, so I'm just calling to let you know that I won't be to work for a couple days, so I'll probably see you next Monday. for 48 seconds. I have been dying ever since. As her heart slowed and stopped, I realized at that very moment something I should have always known. She loved me 
more than she loved herself. I remember when I met your mother. She was beautiful. It's not that she's not beautiful, she's gorgeous. It's just, I'm used to her. I don't even know why I did it, stupid. It's not commitment that I have a problem with. It's contentment. It's like no matter how good I have it, it's never good enough. It's no one's fault. Yeah, uh, this is Brian Sanders. I'm calling to see how my wife's doing. What is her name, please? Bella Sanders. I just want to make sure she's okay. I think it's going to be a long time before she's okay. Hi, Gary. Uh, is Bella there? She will call you when she's ready.
What time do you get off tomorrow? Whenever you want. Meet me at Owen's Beach around 1. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. You want to see cold tomorrow? here to see you. Oh, I know. Here, come on. Here, he's excited. Okay. Get this up. <laughs> I feel like a magician. Okay, you ready? I'll trade you. Okay. There, there she is. See you guys. Yeah. So. How have you been, huh? <laughs> oh, she's been. <laughs> How has she been? Oh. <laughs> Always doing interesting things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Character. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There you go. right thing to do. So how are you doing? Huh. I just want to know if she's okay. She's really hurt, Brian, and I don't think she's going to forgive you. Well, I can't even forgive myself. I know you love her, and she loves you. You just made a mistake. She doesn't understand that you understand what you've done. She only knows she's hurting, and it's because of you. This is either going to drive you farther apart or bring you closer together, but it's not your choice. It's her choice now. I know. You just have to give her time to decide. It's just hard not being able to see her or talk to her. Thanks for coming out today. The right thing to do. My mother has the gift of Catholic guilt, and my dad's gonna kick your ass if you keep calling. So, how are you doing? If I see a therapist three times a week, the state won't take the kids. How are you? Well, it's over. I told her we're done. It's too late for that. I know I messed up, and I can't go back. But I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. How could you do this to me? How? When I love you so much. I don't know. I love you so so much, Brian. I love you. I want a divorce. Bella. I don't want to talk about it. I want a divorce, and I want the kids, and the house and car. And you can keep the dog, okay? 
take whatever you want. Could you be out by Friday? <sighs> if we don't come home soon, Cole's gonna know something's wrong. Well, what are you gonna tell her when you come home and I'm not here? I'm gonna tell her the truth. Okay, I guess this is it for a while. I've known you for a long time, and I've never seen you like this. I'm sorry, John. I'm just having problems at home. You've missed 43 days in the past three months. And when you do show up, you smell like alcohol. My wife and I are... I don't even know what we are. Which is why it hurts me to do this, but you're really not leaving me any choice. I understand. I wish you the best. I really do. Thanks. What I didn't give away, I threw away. I threw it all away as easily as one throws away the wrapping on a birthday present. I've always been too selfish to understand that it's the wrapping that makes it special. You're fired, he said, in so many words. You're fired from life, for you have failed everyone who has ever loved you. You have failed yourself. And no amount of sorry will make this better. No amount of forgiveness will make me worthy. I deserve the hurt I have caused. And in the end, the last thing I want is to feel better.
Just move to a new venue, that's all. I let you talk me into this. Huh. Well, I know you've heard this story a million times, but <laughs> if I don't keep talking, I can't keep walking. So, a million and one. What do you have to say about that, huh? Huh? That's what I thought. Anyway, we drove all day to get to where you were born. Have you ever seen your mother drive? Huh? She's beautiful. She's so serious. I always felt like I was on a mission to make her laugh. I like that feeling of trying to impress somebody. She made me feel that way all the time. And when she smiled, I swear there was heaven on her lips. But don't get any ideas. You're too young to start dating there, mister. You're too young for that. Anyway, we get to the farm way out in the boonies. And I swear the place was odd. It was like a circus. There was kids on unicycles, goats with eight horns. I think there was even a cat with wings. Ah. Woo -hoo -hoo. But you like to play with that. Chase that around the yard all day, huh? Oh. And your mother, she had the best sense of style. She wore dresses from the 50s and little things in her hair. She reminded me of Marilyn Monroe before, well, she was Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I think it was the way the, the wind whipped up her dress. It didn't matter where we went or what we did. I couldn't take my eyes off her. She glowed even when she slept. Have you ever seen The Lion King? Yeah. I have about 75 times. I have kids. Remember? Remember when James Earl Jones is holding up Simba? Well, that's how it was when I met you. Only, you weren't Simba. You, 
You were like a peanut butter cup. A, f a fat, chunky, little peanut butter cup. That's how you got your name. Let's just do this tomorrow, buddy, okay? One more. Where do you go? I don't know. I guess I'm not going anywhere. 
Quit being a pathetic fuck and say hi every once in a while, huh? Well, you gonna sit down? It ain't fucking church. That piece of shit, Paul. I'm Terry. This is my friend, Vodka. Who the fuck are you? Brian. Hey! Hey, waitress, can I get a napkin for my friend here? I'll sleep it off. My child rots in your stagnant cunt. I gotta go. Where the fuck are you gonna go? You got a job interview or something? Oh, gonna be a big shot dental assistant? Yeah, fuck you, you drunk. Taste of used food subsides as the flickering streetlights create a rhythmic dance of muted shadows. I stuff my coat with newspapers I will never read. The first night was cold. So was the second. And every night that followed. Memories will never keep you warm at night. But they will keep you up. Even the good ones. Have you ever held someone so close that you forget which one you are? That you think it's your fingers moving, but it's that. That they finish your words. I can hear your heart beating your lips. I think it's your lips that make my heart. Don't you get that job? <laughs> Jesus Christ, watching you is like watching some pathetic fucking dog shit himself. And then wipe his ass all over the ground and smear it in real good. <laughs> what you need is an aspirin and a shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you gonna sit down or what? What is your deal anyway? You ain't supposed to be here. Well, I used to have a wife, and kids, and a dog, and a house. Jesus Christ, you are a dental assistant. Well, I was an architect. An architect? If you were an architect, you'd know how many floors there were between you and the ground. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you piece of shit. I used to be a dental hygienist. <laughs> being a dental hygienist is a lot like being a shrink. Only most of my clients were numb, kind of like you. Talk to me about being numb. You ever smoke crack? Smoking crack is kind of like waking up Frankenstein's monster. There's a big jolt of electricity, and then he just stumbles around all sad and lonely. So the town folk, they all get together and, you know, get their pitchforks and you know, they run him out of town or kill him or... Fuck, I forget. Killed it. Killed it! Thank you very much. Anyway, my point is this. You walk around here like fucking Frankenstein's monster. And I see. I could tell you ain't supposed to be here. You're a fucking accident. So, I look for my pitchfork. But... Then I realized I'm not a fucking farmer. What do I need a pitchfork for? 
<laughs> but by the time I realize that, you're fucking gone. Just do yourself a favor. Go be an architect. Build yourself some big building that you don't want to jump off of. Or at least be a good drunk. You fucking piece of shit. Thank you. Yeah. Go fuck yourself, Frankie the Park Fly. Jesus, Paul, you're a fucking embarrassment. Do you mind if I sit and watch you paint? No, not at all. This has always reminded me of something from a different life. A couple of months ago, it was wrapped in plastic. Interesting how something so strong can also be so fragile. Mm. So are you in school? Third quarter freshman. Well, it's very beautiful. Thank you. Do you paint? I always wanted to. I always told my wife I'd paint her, but I never did. You're married? No, I'm divorced. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's been a while now. How long? Going on three years. It's too bad. It's all right. Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> they must have tourists written all over me. Well, that depends if you ask me to take your picture for the Space Needle or not. <laughs> I'm from Portland. Really? Yeah. From Salem. Oh, right on. Well, I should probably let you get back to your work. That's OK. You don't have to. Thanks, but I need to start looking for some dinner. But good luck to you. You too. I've ever met. I hope you get everything you ever want from life. 
that you know what you have when you have it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey! Here goes Frankie the Architect. Fuck. You gonna come over and join me or what? Push it, pull it, remember or forget. It's indifferent. It just goes on. And I think back to the little things, the things that matter most. The laughter. The wet laughter that hurts in the best way. Her lip lock eyes across a crowded room. Philosophy over coffee. Explaining why the sky is blue to a child who thinks the world of you. So wide-eyed and full of possibilities. Endless possibilities. When the world was made of magic. Of course unicorns are real. As real as princesses. As real as Bigfoot. As real as you and me. Once, when I was your age, I rode one. I rode one, but the horn is very sharp. That's how I got these scars on my chin, you know? <laughs> Fly. Fly. Fly as I sink. Take a walk with me And let's go find belief I wanna see the stars again With the wonder that I had At the age of ten So now I'm alone Once again I'm on my own She lost the magic she had for me in her eyes. We no longer share the same skies. No, we don't. Not at all. Not at all. So now I walk alone. Once again, I'm on my own. She lost the magic she had for me. Lost the magic, I'm not complete. In each one of us, Peter Pan, Elvis Presley, Superman, in each one of us, Jacques Cousteau, to marvel at the earth and the sea below.
in each one of us Peter Pan Elvis Presley Superman in each one of us Jacques Cousteau to marvel at the earth and the sea below Take a walk with me. With Do me. you remember the first day we met? Let's go find belief. To marvel at the earth and the sea below Well, I, I just need someone who understands The little boy inside the man I just need someone who understands Part of me lives in a dreamland
happiness I could never give you. And if you should see the unrecognizable me on the street, don't look down. Don't look back. And I will grant you the same respect. Ain't you guys got a home to go to? Yeah. I was thinking about maybe getting a wife, shitting out some kids, being an architect. Will you marry me? Shut up, you fucking drunk. Do you ever leave the bench? What, do they decorate you guys at Christmas time? <coughs> yes? No? Okay, well, I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee if you wanna join me. Come on, sweetheart. Daddy wants some breakfast. Loopy! One thing is all I get. If one is all I get, I don't want to play this. Pussy. I want to be president of the United States. That's right. That way I can declare a state anarchy. I want to be a movie star. A big fucking movie star. Live in a big fucking house. And make big fucking movies. I want to be the love child of Sid Vicious and Molly Ringwald. I want to sit up all night in an all night diner and order nothing. I want to be God, for the sole purpose of saying, I brought you into this world, don't think for one minute I won't take you out. I want the original promise. I want justice for all. I want love, hate, ups and downs, and everything in between, for nothing in return. I want the world in my palm, no cooler than 60 degrees, no warmer than 75, and never a cloud in the sky. I want the perfect kiss, the perfect imperfection, the perfect life. But more than anything, I want someone who wants what I want. And I want her to walk through that door right over there and order biscuits and gravy. You're a pathetic fuck. Thanks. Not you, him. Jesus, that was beautiful.
You left perfect. Was it worth it? What is left of you? From this rendezvous, contentment fades away. Into the grave and ghost of you. Well, it hides away. Where's it going to? And the way you were lives in shadow. Now and becomes a blur, and nothing can touch the moment. It's all yours now. You own it. Nothing, no, not even reason, can touch the season that you're in. That you're in. You lean to kiss it. Well, it fades away, but then you miss it. You're so close, but through the years, in circles again, with burdens and fears. Oh, now you are swimming in tears. Sorrow. Oh, oh, oh. Contentment fades away. Into the grave and ghost of you. Well, it hides away. Where's it going to? And the way you were lives in shadows now, and becomes the blur. Nothing can touch the moment. It's all yours now. You own it. Nothing, no, not even reason can touch the season that you're in. Nothing can touch the moment. It's all yours now. You own it. Nothing. Not even reason can touch the season that you're in. That you're in. La da da. 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 That you're in.